L'ambizione del cantiere The ambition of the shipyard Centuruno Navi is huge, building the best models in terms of engineering, performance design and style. And we are ready to test their first masterpiece, Vespro. Opera prima, Vespro. Il nome richiama il momento della giornata. The name recalls the moment of the day that I prefer, the sunset, but I will not be softened by feelings. Dai sentimenti. In fondo uno yacht è un'opera di ingegneria navale. After all, the yacht is a work of naval engineering. By the way, it was designed by the shipyard's founder, Marco Arnaboldi, who has been designing high-performance boats with water jet propulsions for 30 years. And this really matters. E questo conta. It is fascinating, and looking at its profile, I imagine its performance. I imagine how modern, out of tradition and innovative it is. With a beam of 4.6 meters on a length of 16 and a half meters, it seems they did not want to give up the convenience of white space. But then how did they make it fast? The construction is lightweight, made in sandwich with a hybrid of carbon and glass, epoxy-based vinyl ester resin and a high-density PVC foam core. These are features that also offer strength and rigidity, qualities that are indispensable if you want to run on water. Fremo dalla voglia di provare. Reaching to try it, but first, let's check it out. The cockpit sides are foldable, so as to amplify the pleasure that gives this terrace by the sea. To provide even more excitement, come very close to the surface. The air intakes of the engines are integrated in the stern pillars of the hardtop to bring oxygen into the combustion chamber, but also to wash, as they say, the engine room with fresh air. They are much more effective than traditional air intakes, certainly not as dynamic as these. The vertical windlass gains volume to the cabin below deck because it requires less space for installation. This allows for a crew cabin at the bow. The profile is purest, as is the bridge with the sun pad flush with the passage. But there is a gunwale that saves and prevents overboard slips. In the vertex, the speakers. The aft sun deck is walk around, but other configurations are possible. For example, with sun pads moved to the terraces or with sofas and dining area in the center. All easily achieved with a few quick movements. Under the hardtop, there's a living area with L-shaped sofa and a dining table. On the opposite side, another sofa and a bar cabinet. Below deck, there's a wide salon with a sofa and the kitchen. To make it more solid and aggressive, they did not pierce the hull with portholes. Light comes through a transparent ceiling. In the bow is the master stateroom with a central bed closets with mirrored doors and drawers. The bathroom is divided into two, shower on one side and toilet on the other. The service bathroom is located in the salon. Towards the stern, there is the guest cabin. You decide for how many people. Here we have a sofa and a bed. In the middle, there's a storage cabinet and other storages on the sides. There are very refined finishes, even with signed details. White or black essences and glossy lacquers define its style. Le the throttles, these ones. Il timone. The helm? No, I can't call it that. It's a steering wheel with return to the center. Gas, and let's go. The 
non sono potentissimi. The engine is not very powerful, but the performance is outstanding. At least that's what I found written. But now I want to try it. And this is a boat that takes me back to the era of racing. All'epoca delle competizioni. Il mare non è calmo, tenete. The sea's not calm. Hold on, because we're going to do some jumping when we put the throttle down. In sala macchine, due motori. In the engine room, two man V8 engines of 1200 horsepower each and two marine jet power water jets, model 350X. Import these thrusters, the water jets, give exceptional maneuverability. Look at how fast she veers, and they are with the engines idling, using the steering wheel with even throttles. When I have found my course, which will be in the direction of the sun, I'll let go of the steering wheel, return to the centre and hit the gas. Powerful thrust from the very first knots. Spectacular weight. Engines at 1,670 RPM. We are already at 18 knots. Put the interceptors down. The view in this situation is perfect. 20 knots, 200 litres per hour, 10 litres per mile. Did you hear them? These water jets will keep us entertained. 30 knots, 255 litres per hour total. Which means the efficiency has increased, I'm going faster, and the consumption per mile has gone down. Perfect navigation, wonderful trim, boat laid out, more gas. They did an aerodynamic study to keep air from flowing into the cockpit, and indeed there is not a gust of wind here. The fluid threads are moved out of the roof pillars, so that even after the passengers are fine. Enough talk about these things. Down the throttles. While veering, you have to give rudder and hold it to close the veer, to complete it and do all the evolution, which right now we are doing at 40 knots. Feel how the hull stays soft, even when we don't catch waves with the bow, but with a side part of the hull, under the side bow. These side windows grant perfect vision, also when you are veering. As the speed increases, I raise the interceptors. In this way, I correct the trim and also manage to increase efficiency. 40 knots, we're under 8 litres per mile. Cruising speed, 48 knots, still 8 litres per mile. And intercept is up. Fabulous. 50. 53. 56 knots. Spectacular. Yacht. Even with a wave at Beam Reach. I was amazed by the Vespro test, and I wonder what Forza and Eteria, Centurna Navi's next models, 28 and 39 metres respectively, will be like. <laughs>